pure tone audiometry. So the purpose of testing hearing is to aid in the process of making a decision regarding the type and the extent of a person's hearing loss. So the type, whether it's conductive, sensory neural, or mixed, and the severity of a person's hearing loss. The reliability of your test is based on the interrelationship of such factors, including the calibration of the test equipment, so whether or not the test equipment is working properly, the environment in which you're testing, the patient's performance, so if the patient understands the directions and is cooperating, and how well the audiologist knows what they're doing. It's not hearing that we measure, it's a response of a set of acoustic signals that we re interpret as representing hearing. So it's not actually hearing unless our brain is making sense of it. Unfortunately, there are nursing homes filled with people that have dementia. Though they may be hearing, their brain isn't really making sense or interpreting the sounds that are coming in. So everything could be working properly, but unless your brain is making sense of it, you're not really um, hearing. Pure tone audiometry is performed with an audiometer. An audiometer is used for determining the hearing thresholds. So the thresholds are the lowest level at, we, at which a person can hear a sound. These thresholds are compared to norms that are established at a variety of frequencies. And that determines whether or not your hearing is quote normal compared to the norms. And pure tone testing is done with air conduction. Remember air conduction tests the whole system the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear, and beyond, and bone conduction, which tests simply the cochlea and beyond. There's a wide range of frequencies or pitches that we test for air conduction, all the way from 125 hertz, which is very low, up through 8,000 hertz, which would be much higher. Normally, we test starting at 250 hertz, the octaves. When I say octaves, I say mean 250, octave means doubling, to 500, to 1,000, to 2,000, 4,000, and 8,000. We test inter-octave or between the octaves at 750, 1,500, 3,000, 6,000 when there's a big discrepancy between the scores that we get at the octaves. We test a range of intensities or loudnesses from a very, very soft sound at negative 10 dBHL to a very loud sound of 110 dBHL. For bone conduction, we test a smaller range of frequencies from 250 to 4,000 hertz, and the maximum testable intensity range is lower than that of air conduction because if we were to drive the bone oscillator up to a very high level, it would vibrate the skull so much that the person would actually feel the vibration instead of hearing it. So this is what I just said. That's why we don't put it up too high, the level too high, and we test a more limited range of frequencies because at the higher frequencies or at the lower frequencies, there's distortion and it's not a pure tone. If you remember from hearing science, a pure tone is a simple sinusoidal wave. The test environment is very important. Background noise should be at a minimum. Background noise artificially enhances the thresholds. So in a quiet environment, my threshold may be 5 dB, but in a noisy environment, my threshold or the lowest level that I could hear something might be 25 dB. There are ways to reduce background noise using specifically designed headphones, testing with insert earphones, or using a sound treated chamber. So some earphones aren't always perfect. They could allow for some extra background noise. When you're putting an earphone on a person, make sure they're on snug, make sure that the um, it's going right into the ear canal that they're on appropriately and they're not you know up too high or down too low. Heavy earphones might be uncomfortable for children so 
what you could do are insert earphones and inserts are better because inserts are inserted directly in the ear so there's a lessening of background noise when, when compared to standard headphones. There's no such thing as a soundproof room. It's impossible to remove all sound, but we do test hearing in sound isolated chambers, which are meant to keep the noise level below that of the background noise. So when you go to observe or when you get your hearing tested at the Speech and Hearing Center, Look at the room that you're in. There's a, it's a more massive room. There are insulating materials, there's dead air space. It's a heavy solid door that creates a tight acoustic seal. And inside the walls are covered with soft materials to reduce the reverberation, to reduce the background noise. There are two suites. The examiner and the equipment is gonna be in, for the most part, one room. And then the patient is in the other room with a window to provide visual communication between the patient and the clinician. So the best, me best methods for testing include earphone attenuation devices or insert earphones in a sound isolating chamber.